Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Basically Run, written by Catfish21SM. So, I have to ask, General Zazark, your species seems to have entered the space stage in the middle of a great tribulation, the worst war in recorded history. How is it that your species not only survived, but remained free during this time, when you were just a new budding civilization? Ah, yes. You mean the war for the precursor taker. If I'm correct, that's how the Galactic Council grew so advanced so quickly. They analyzed and tried to replicate precursor tech. Uh, I hear they didn't get very far, though. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, to answer your question, it's because of our squishy little friends. Um, yeah, what now? Yeah, so early in our development, before we even discovered space travel, we met a small bipedal species. Uh, they only grew about two clickets tall, barely larger than a hatchling, and were covered in all squishy flesh material rather than a hard carapace. Some of the best species on our home world uh, look like that. At first, they were assumed to be a new discovery, relatives of the pea collie. However, you can imagine our surprise when one of them began talking. It used a translation to us. It said that our planet was quite beautiful and that it enjoyed the scenery. It offered to make a trading agreement with us. We were unsure what such a small creature could offer us, but we accepted. It offered us knowledge and food when we needed it. In exchange, we quartered off several sections of territory on our home world, designated them as nature reserves. We did this because the squishies, as we called them, seemed to enjoy visiting these areas, and were quite disappointed when we developed a location that they enjoyed. We wanted to keep them around because we advanced rather quickly with their help. Furthermore, they saved us from several world wars by providing advice, meditation, and resources where needed. They were truly the best of friends. We asked them what they called themselves, but... They merely replied that we could not pronounce it, and they liked being called Squishy, so the name stuck. Then, uh, shortly after we began exploring space, a representative of the Atraxi appeared. They gave us an offer, surrender, and they would kill us quickly and painlessly. They needed our planet's resources for their war. Apparently, the large swaths of untouched land that we had left for the squishies contained ample resource deposits, some of which were quite rare and sought after. Fortunately, a representative from the squishies was there to help us negotiate, though negotiation might be the wrong word for it. It was more like a threat, really. Huh? My vocals wouldn't let me translate properly, and you need to see it in order to get the full effect. Luckily, we have it recorded. Uh, watch this. A recording appears, showing an average well-dressed human in Hawaiian-style clothing walking up to the massive eyeball alien. Hello there, I'm Admiral John of the Independent Earth Fleet. I am a high-ranking squishy officer, though I suppose our species' real name is human. You see, we're in a bit of a dilemma right now. Uh, you seem to be trespassing on territory of our ally, uh, of whom we have a defensive pact. You uh, also seem to be making some uh, <laughs> uh, rather bold claims and threats. Uh, fortunately for you, I am on vacation and would really like to avoid all the paperwork that would normally be required for this type of situation. With our friend's permission, of course, we will let this whole thing slide if you just leave. And uh, who do you think that you are to demand us to leave? Oh, uh, uh, sorry, uh, we never actually met your species before. We, we tend to keep to ourselves, you see. After a great extermination, we've pretty much been isolationists. Uh, I don't want to cause too much damage, after all. Uh, I'm sure you recognize this, however. Holding up a small wand-like device, letting out some strange buzzing noises, the Atraxi spoke up. That, uh, is that precursor tech and uh, fully functional at that? When did you get that? Reply immediately! Oh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, uh, so that's what you call them, uh, 
We refer to them as Ansa, one of the hive minds that tried to conquer the galaxy a few hundred thousand years ago. They had another name for us as well. I'm sure you've seen it in some of their records. The one thing that they were good at was keeping detailed records of their battles. We never really got the opportunity to properly introduce ourselves to them, unfortunately. So they ended up coming up with some pretty silly nicknames for us. Uh, they called us the Oncoming Storm, the Bringers of Darkness, uh, the Great Filter. Well, uh, that was before we exterminated them. Uh, the little pests had a coming after all. Uh, oh, don't worry, we're nicer than that. They're still alive on their own world, just forbidden from leaving ever again. It seems that you lot are currently entangled in a war to get your hands on some of their tech. Well, uh, that doesn't really concern us. Uh, I'm just letting you know that this tech is ancient to us. Well, it was pretty outdated when we destroyed the ants, so uh, take that as you will, I suppose. Uh, anyway, I'm sure you're getting rather bored of my speech, so I'll keep this simple. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, basically, uh, run. The video cuts out and the skies change in color as dot after dot leaves the atmosphere and enters hyperspace. End of story. Story number two, Duel Between True Masters, written by Random3x. Stepping into the ring with a crowd of onlookers chanting his name was a human who looked like he'd be in his late forties. His hair a ready gray and a worn look on his features, but his eyes were as sharp as any blade as they scanned the crowd before him. The crowd under his gaze parted, revealing his opponent. Like the human, he showed his age, but unlike his opponent, he was an elf. Millennia had passed in his lifetime, and at that age, he'd become earless, someone without equal amongst even other races. It is often said that a duel between true masters is over before it even begins, that those at the pinnacle would be able to know who the winner would be instinctively. Human, are you certain you wish to continue this? The elven master of the blade asked, his voice wheezing with age. I, uh, I sure as I'll ever be, the man replied, nodding while flashing a crooked smile, which the elf returned kind. Both competitors for the title Greatest Blade have agreed to the duel. Victory can only be claimed by death or submission. The bout shall begin when the bell is rung. A loud, boisterous voice announced from the raised platform overlooking the arena. Both men looked up at the announcer, nodding to confirm that they understood the rules. With the duel set to begin, the onlookers all retreated to the stands to see what would be history in the making. This was the first time in history that the greatest blade, as he was known, had accepted a challenge from a human. A loud clang rang out as the bell rang to indicate the start. Immediately, the air froze around the two men as they locked eyes with one another. The tension was such that even their swords may struggle to cut it. The human grinned, letting the world around him fade. All the noise and distraction now gone. Only the elf remained. Both men drew their respective swords, the elf holding his thin blade down by his leg, while the human held his up in front of his body. With an explosion of energy, the human burst forward towards the elf, surprising him with the sheer speed of his movements, bringing the sword down in a wide slash. He watched as the elf merely twitched his wrist, and he brought up his own sword to deflect the blow, responding with a rapid slash, cutting the man's throat. The man blinked his eyes, and he was back where he had started. Guess you're as good as they say you are, the man grumbled. The elf smiled back. I'm glad to be up to your measure. Shifting his foot forward about an inch, the elf sprung forward, this time delivering a truly terrifying flurry of blows that the human was barely able to deflect let alone defend against. The flurry continued for minutes till the elf began to tire, his breathing growing ragged. Seeing his opening, the human lunged forward with the tip of his sword, piercing the elf's chest and cutting his heart in two. The elf looked down at the blade through his chest before blinking, returning to where he'd started. Both men stood still as statues, only their eyes darting in every direction as they planned their next move, only to see the phantom of their motion be met and bested. I dare say that we are rather evenly matched. Uh, it would be a coin toss who would win. Aye, uh, it does seem that way, the man nodded. I will admit that I am rather cowardly and don't enjoy having such even odds. 
I've experienced an age since I last met a foe that might actually best me. The man nodded. Agreed. But say that we settle this not with blades, but with beverages. Settled with a contest of tricks, well, uh, I ain't gonna say no to that. The crowd had been watching the exchange, were left thoroughly confused. After the bell had rung, all that had happened from their perspective was that the human had wiggled his sword a little, and the elf had shifted his foot forward. Oi, what about the fight? A voice in the crowd angrily shouted. The man looked at the elf. Draw! The elf nodded in response. Yes, referee, it is a draw. It has been centuries since I have met someone who would be able to block my attacks. It would be a shame to lose such an interesting foe as soon after meeting. With that statement, both men sheathed their blades, leaving the audience even more confused. They had come to see a fight between two true masters, only to see nothing at all. But the masters knew. They, like all true masters, could see several steps ahead, like in a game of chess. No fool would continue a game where they would be ultimately checkmated. End of story. There is a new legend on the horizon. Blueberry Cat has taken the T6 Patreon spot. Thank you very much, and I am sure that I speak for everyone when I say that. For Arnholtz, Bushmaster177, and Leslie517, thank you very much.